Hey everybody, it's Tox from CritsHappen.com. Welcome back and thanks for watching. Today we got something really special. Today we're going to do a critical review of Smash Up. This is AEG's game of probably the year in all honesty because it was so huge going into Gen Con. There was a lot of popularity, a lot of buzz about it, both from the art, from the play style, from the snarkiness, I guess if you want to use that word. I mean, it is billed as the shuffle building game of total awesomeness, which is a pretty hefty tag to, to go ahead and throw on a game. It's going to be a different review. It's not going to be the normal, I sit down and show you everything in the box and walk you through my opinions. No. In fact, what you're going to see is live footage from Gen Con. We actually filmed this in AEG's booth. So the first person I want to thank is Todd Rowland, who is the marketing director at AEG and actually the producer of Smash Up. The second person I want to thank is the guy you'll see in the video with me, who is Rodney Smith. Who is Rodney Smith? If you don't know, I highly suggest you go check out youtube.com slash watch it played. Watch it played is a web series that Rodney puts together with him and sometimes members of his family and he'll walk through how to play a game. He'll unbox it, he'll put out all the components, he'll show you how to play, and at times he'll go through turns and leave it up to the viewers to suggest the next turn. It's really well produced, he's a really fun guy, and it's just a great thing to watch, so I highly recommend it. Roddy and myself connected a little bit before Gen Con, and we got talking about this idea of the ultimate smash up. Him versus me in a battle to the death, and only one person walks out. Okay, maybe it's not that grim and that serious, but it was a lot of fun. So why do I need to keep talking? Let's shut up and we'll show you the ultimate smash up. Hi, I'm Rodney Smith from Watch It Play. And I'm Tox from Crits Happen. And we're about to smash up with Smash Up. In Smash Up, you're trying to be the first player to get 15 points. And to do that, you're going to be using decks. The game comes with eight different decks that represent the eight different factions in the game. We've got aliens, wizards, dinosaurs, pirates, ninjas, you name it. And what each player is going to do is they're going to take two of these different factions of 20 card decks, put them together, and shuffle them up to form their deck. I'm going to take the wizards and the aliens. Of course, a winning combination. Of course. Magical aliens always do well. Yes. And I'm going to do zombies and pirates because who could love anything more than an undead pirate? <laughs> <laughs> you shuffle them up real good, we're ready to move on to the next part. Smash Up also comes with a series of cards for the bases. These are what you're trying to destroy to collect points. We have to shuffle these up and then you play a certain number of them to the table based on the number of players. One for each player and then an additional one. So since we have two players, we're going to lay out three bases. Here's an example of one of the base cards in the game. The top number here on the left is the threshold. We're going to be sending our minions to these bases to try to destroy them. And once the values of our minions collectively equal or greater than the threshold, this base will be destroyed. And the player with the most number of minions, total value, uh, that's the highest, will get the highest value score in the first position, so the five. And the second player, who with the next highest value of minions, will get the second score. The third score we're going to ignore because we're playing a two-player game. This would be if you have three or more players in the game. And each base also has a special ability. This one says that after this base scores, the winner discards his or her hand and draws five cards. The bases can be quite different. This base here doesn't have values that you score, but in its ability, it explains that for each minion that you have at this location, you're going to get one extra victory point. To begin the game, each player draws five cards. Maximum hand size is ten. And then on your turn, either play an action or a minion card. And since I have the least amount of hair, I think I'm going to go ahead and jump in and go first. So I'll play a minion called a Buccaneer here at the Evans City Cemetery, who is worth four power. And so now we're down to only needing 16 more to meet the threshold. He looks like he's got an ability there. What's that all about? He does. Not only is it an ability, it's a special ability. Ooh, special. It says if this minion would be destroyed, move it to another base instead. So not only is he a Buccaneer, he's a swashbuckling Buccaneer. He can <laughs> jump between if he were to ever fear danger, face danger. Very nice. Then as an additional, I can play one 
one minion and one action. And with my action, I will actually go ahead and play the Maul Crawl. And I'll place this here. This is an action from the Zombies. And it says, search your deck for any number of cards with the same name and place, or, or name, and place them into your discard pile and shuffle your deck. Ah, uh, they're being drawn to the Maul. They're being drawn to the Maul, that's right. So I can search my deck for any number of cards with the same name. Very strange, but apparently there's a Maul in the cemetery. Very unconventional. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's a city and there's different that's things right. around. So I think what I'm going to do is actually go through and make sure there's no additional. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to take my four walkers and I'm going to, because they all have the same name, I will then put them into my discard pile. And as you can probably guess from zombies, they may be coming back. <laughs> oh dear. And then at the end of my turn, I will go ahead and draw two additional cards. What? Just because I'm awesome. You can only have a maximum hand size of 10, so if I were to have 10 or more, I'd have to discard down to 10. But I'm not that awesome yet. So I'll go ahead and pass the awesomeness over to Rodney, and you can take from here. Perfect. All right, now that was pretty good. I have to admit, that was pretty good. But it's my turn to do something. I'm going to play my Archmage. Same location. We're going to start fighting over the spot. But my Archmage has an ongoing ability, which allows me to play an extra action turn on each of my turns. So I'm going to play my first of my actions, because you always get one action card to play. Play an extra minion. So this goes to my discard pile. Now I'm going to play a minion. I'm going to play the Collector. You may return a minion of power three or less on this base to its owner's hand. So I can't actually activate this effect because his minion is actually a four. But I do get to have another minion out here, so I've got six. And remember, the person with the most minions, total value, when this base is destroyed, will get the first points. Those five points are mine. But I also have another action to play, because remember, I get to play extra action. And I play Scry. I get to search through my deck uh, for an action card, I reveal it, and then I place it into my hand and shuffle my deck. So I've gone through my deck, I've picked my card, it's the beam up. With the beam up, I can return a minion to its owner's hand. That's coming, buddy. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> right. Then I have to shuffle up my hand, and that's the end of my turn, and I get to draw out. I get to draw two cards, and that's the end of my turn. All right. Now I have the awesomeness button back, and I am going to play a minion first. I will play a saucy wench, who uh, is very saucy. She's three power. She says, I may destroy a minion of power two or less on this base. So I think. Ah, uh, the collector needs to go home and look at his collection. <laughs> you beamed up my alien. That's right. And then for my one action, I will play They Keep Coming. You may play an extra minion from your discard pile. That works out quite nicely because I just so happen to have a walker in my discard right, pile. Right, of course you do. And I will put him on this base as well. He's worth two. So now I have a total of nine total power towards our 20. We have a total of 13 total between us getting there closer and closer. So the power shifted a little bit here. Slightly, but it gets even better because my minion says I can look at the top card of my deck and discard it or return it to the top of my deck. So I shall do that and I shall show our loyal viewers what it is and I think I'll return that to the top of my deck. <laughs> Rats! That will be the end of my turn and then I will draw my two cards. Look what I drew. That's amazing. Amazing. You're so surprised. I'm so shocked and I will be done with my awesome. You know what I think? Um, I don't like how this is going right now to be honest. <laughs> so we'll just play a little more and we'll come back once I'm winning again and we'll show you how things are going. It won't take long. <laughs> so I know I said we'd come back when I was winning uh, but that hasn't happened yet and we thought you should maybe see what happens when a base gets destroyed. Apparently that's about to happen. Yes. So we've battled quite heavily over the Evans City Cemetery because quite frankly my zombies call it home. Um, so we're going to go ahead and actually break it with a pirate. The first mate is going to come in and he is two points which will put us at a threshold of 20 so at the end of the turn that will go ahead and resolve. But this also says special, after this base is scored you may move this minion to another base instead of the discard pile. So instead of all of them going away. Right, that's a good point. When the base breaks, all of the minions at the base would normally go to your discard pile. The first mate's going to stick around. Yep. Um, and I am actually not going to play uh, any actions whatsoever, okay. so that will be the end of my turn. So since I scored the base and we reached the threshold for 20, the base is going to be destroyed. So a couple of different things happen when you score a base. You want to make sure that if you have anybody with special abilities that happen when the base is scored, that those get resolved. So I'll take my first mate, and since the base is scored, I can move it to another base. And I'll go ahead and move him up here to make sure that he's combating the arc mage for an even four versus an even four. Right. Then the rest of them will all go to the discard pile, which is great for me and my zombies. 
And then I will score five points for having the most total points, and Rodney will score three points for having the second total points. And then finally, after this base scores, the winner, myself, discards his or her hand and draws five cards. So I'll go ahead and So you're about to dump some more zombies and your I discard yeah, I'm going to jump more zombies. Lovely. And lovely. And I'll draw my five cards. And then you get plus three, and I get plus five. The base goes away, and then we replace it with the top card from the base deck. And then we have a new spot to fight over. Tortuga! I hope you got a really good sense of how the game works that we showed you the mechanics of the game. We decided there's a lot here at Gen Con that we want to bring you, so we didn't bother finishing the game, really. I mean, you don't want to see all of that anyway, I'm sure. Nothing really worth seeing, right? Nothing worth seeing. Okay, so listen, I don't do reviews, you guys know that. So I'm going to turn it over to the review man himself, Fox. What do you think of the game? Well, I really, really like this game. I mean, there's a lot of buzz coming into Gen Con about it. It was on everybody's hot list. It was on the hotness of BGG.com. I'm going to give it a crit for multiple different reasons around this. Number one, there's a lot of customization in the game. You only have eight factions to start out with. They've already got a lot of plans. We'll talk about that part. But even if it just does eight factions, there's a lot of different things that we can do. Not even just in those eight factions and playing them in different ways, but the amount of players that are in the game. We've played multiple games. We found out that in two-player games, you can play the same two factions totally differently than you would in a three or a four-player game. So there's a lot of flexibility and there's just a lot of ways to come to the game with different strategies and different ideas. And that's one of my big things. I'm a big believer that when you get a good game and good people around the table, good things happen. And this game provides a great experience at the table. It's a fun thing, it's very engaging even when it's not your turn. So it brings people together and you start talking and having a great social time. It's easy to teach, right? Like, you saw it, very simple, yeah. not overly complex, easy to get going real quick. We learned in, in a matter of, I think, minutes, literally, yeah. picking up the game. It's very simple. The rule book is very funny. Um, they have a lot of comedy. I mean, when, when the game is built, like a shuffle building game of total yeah. awesomeness, <laughs> you know it's not going to be like too it's straight stuff. Yeah, 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 that's right. So um, I think we're actually going to bring somebody on now here real quick, uh, Todd oh, cool. Rowland, who yeah. is the marketing director at uh, AEG and actually the producer of Smash. All right, let's get him. So we're here now with Todd Rowland, who is the director of marketing for AEG and the producer of Smash Up. Uh, we just went through and gave it a crit for review, which is the highest on our scale. Um, Rodney, of course, is a reviewer, did a great job of explaining the mechanics to everyone, just showing everyone how the game works. So we wanted to know if you could tell us a little more about the game itself, and maybe when it's out in the streets outside of people that couldn't make it to Gen Con, and then maybe what some plans are you have coming up for the game and how to expand on it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the game is going to release in early September, uh, first or second week, hopefully. Uh, uh, we'll have it in your stores, and then in the future, we have already are working on an expansion for December, um, which, again, you know how the boat goes. It could be January. <laughs> We're trying for December. Um, it'll have four new groups. It'll have plants, uh, like Audrey, you know, killer plants. Uh, plants versus zombies. Zombies. Maybe plants and zombies. <laughs> no, we hear people like that. Um, ghosts, bear cavalry, bear cavalry, and uh, steampunks. And so each of those brings a new mechanic, different from all these original eight. So when you combine them, it just increases the combination of decks exponentially. And then, of course, we're looking to the long term future of Smash Up. We have ideas. We have deck ideas on spreadsheets that go for miles. So we have a lot of ideas. We're just going to have a lot of fun with the game and just keep trying to make it as, as fun and crazy as we possibly can. It's one of the first things you see, right? You open the box and there's all this storage area. Yeah. All kinds of empty slots. You know things yeah. are coming. Right. Some things are I have to fill that box up for you. That's my duty as a producer is to make sure you fill your box. That's all awesome. I will do what I can. Well, thank you so much for letting us do this Smash Up. Yeah, appreciate a lot that. Of fun. I know I did. I did too. You? Yes, yes. Yep. I appreciate when I was you losing. <laughs> it's all good. Well, other than that, if anyone has any questions, they can go to AEG, right? Yes, allrec.com. Allrec.com. You can find them on Twitter. Uh, if you guys have a Facebook page. We do. Right. I think you're like us. You're on the moon. You're everywhere. We try to be. We try to get on everything we can. And, of course, you can search for critshappen.com and watch it play it on YouTube. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Thank you, everybody.